PDSE 2020, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in Toronto Commodity TV for you and we are now at the booth of Plateau Energy Metals and uh, with me here is Alex Holmes, the CEO, who wants to give us an insight for the first time into his terrific company. Alex, welcome. Thanks for having us here at your booth. Thank you for having us. So, how's the show? Uh, fantastic. A little quieter this year, but yeah. uh, a lot of activity. People are excited. So, so yeah, you project. see real interest. Yes. And that's because probably because we see already the keyboard, lithium. So we talk <laughs> about e-mobility, we talk about battery metals here. Yes. And uh, maybe you give us a short insight into your company. Where are you? Where are you working? What are you doing? Absolutely. So uh, Plateau Energy Metals, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange under PLU. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working in southeastern Peru for about 15 years. Uh, we have two projects. The t project we're going to talk about today is our lithium project mm -hmm. because we just put out a preliminary economic assessment mm, nice. about four weeks so ago. So we have some numbers to talk about. Great. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Fantastic. So lithium in Peru, Peru is normally known for more for, let's say, gold and copper, I would call it. How That's did correct. you come on the lithium? Well, the lithium was a discovery about two years ago mm -hmm. by our geologic team. Same component of land package that we have with our uranium project. And what we found in our uranium project was the upper level of rocks had low levels of lithium. Mm -hmm. And so the geologists being curious we're trying to determine where was this lithium coming from. Mm -hmm. And so in late 2017, as part of a prospecting effort, uh, we targeted a zone and hit a, uh, sunk a drill hole and hit a completely new rock type we'd never seen before. Really? No wow. uranium, all lithium and okay. high grade. So it's like hard rock, it's not a salar like it's not brine of course, so it's hard rock lithium, right? It's hard rock, but it's yeah. not spodumene. Aha. So it was a so head scratcher. So what's the difference? Well, as a spodumene deposit, you have a lithium oxide mm -hmm. and you produce a concentrate mm -hmm. and then you have to go through a energy intensive conversion process yeah. to get it to a lithium chemical. Okay. For our project, we equate it to a solid brine. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely made up term, but all of the brine projects source their lithium from volcanic rocks. Mm -hmm. Water leaching through volcanic rocks for a million years. Mm -hmm. What we seem to have here is lithium in a volcanic rock that's never been leached before. Uh -huh. And so it's five to ten times the grade of a brine. It's hard rock, mm -hmm. and no matter what we do from a processing standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, we can extract lithium very mm -hmm. readily. Okay, question, how do you extract it then? Do you need like chemicals like cyanide, or how does that work? Like uh, so in gold, for example. Just like you use in gold or copper. So okay, acid. same thing. So we uh -huh. use a tank leach process, just like you'd use in gold or copper, yeah. and we leach the rock and pull the lithium into a sulfate solution. And then Amazing. everything after that is okay. exactly like the brine projects mm -hmm. or like the spodumenes once the chemical conversion yeah. gets involved. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, super. Now we went already a little bit too far, but yeah. anyhow, um, you said you brought out the PEA. So what, yes. what, what, does the look, uh, what does the PEA look like? Sure. So uh, we start with a large resource. So we're about the sixth largest hard rock project in the world. Okay. Uh, 320 million tons of ore at mm -hmm. uh, about 3,200 uh, ppm, sorry, mm -hmm. 3,000 ppm lithium. Mm -hmm. And then for the mine plan and the preliminary economic assessment, we just focused on the richest zone of lithium. Mm -hmm. which is a fairly horizontal flat line body. It's about half the resource. Mm -hmm. And in that we mine about uh, 110 million tons at 3400 ppm lithium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, And uh, that looks like a 33 year mine life. Wow, that's long. It's a long time. Yeah. Uh, we start off at a, I would call it a medium sized lithium project and scale up two times to become produce in excess of 85,000 tons of lithium chemical a year. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important because Scaling up and having a very high purity or low impurity battery quality product, being able to scale up to become one of the largest single asset mines mm -hmm. in the world today mm -hmm. is uh, very significant. Okay, cool. Can you already elaborate a bit on, let's say, the cost structure? Yeah. Um, what, what, would it, what would it look like, let's say, all in costs, production per ton, mm -hmm. compared to, let's say, the today's selling price in the world market? Sure. So if we look at a cash operating cost basis, we're just under $4,000 per ton. Mm -hmm. The current market for FOB South America contracts, right, mm -hmm. offtake market, is just over $9,000 per ton. Okay. We've come down from around fourteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars mm -hmm. uh, The spot market is China is not really one to look at because it's a very small component of the market. Mm -hmm. And so FOB South America applies to us. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at all in cost, we're around $4,500, $4,600 per ton. Okay, wow, that's so, quite that. So it's 100% margin today. Yes. Today's prices, and yeah. And we scoped out the project as lithium only. And we have mm -hmm. some potential byproducts that we're working on that metallurgical work right now. Mm -hmm. And what would be the byproducts? So byproducts, uh, SOP. So mm -hmm. potassium, SOP, mm -hmm. sulfate of potassium, which mm -hmm. is fertilizer. Yeah. So it's a specialty fertilizer. The good thing here is Peru has zero domestic sources of SOP. Ah, so they, they could use that domestically? Yes. Wow, that's And it's that's the fantastic. fastest growing region in South uh -huh. America. Okay, uh, super. Cesium is another one, which is an interesting yeah. one and yeah. quite strategic. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, what would be 
a probable capex for the project? Uh, so in the PEA, what we were able to do, because we did 18 months of processing work, mm -hmm. uh, we were able to go out for 80% of all capex quoted, mm -hmm. uh, installed capacity. And so we were just under 600 million. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that is our, makeable. our acid yeah. plant. Mm -hmm. And the reason we chose an acid plant is because it's about a third of our operating costs. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to control the operating costs more. Mm -hmm. The acid plant allows us to bring bulk sulfur in, convert it to acid, and be mm -hmm. part of that process, mm -hmm. you create energy. It's a finished plant, and we can actually produce 18 megawatts of power at site. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely it's excess power. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, great. So what are the plans, let's say, uh, I mean, it's not defined yet, but what could you imagine to finance that? Would uh, somebody like, uh, let's say, CATL, Northvolt, etc., Vata, would come to you and say, hey, you know, guys, that's exactly what we need for our batteries. We make an off-take agreement, we finance you with the stuff. Would something like this work? Or, let's say, would a Chinese battery manufacturer come to you, or even out of the U.S.? I don't know. Yeah, I think, um, so the, the battery supply chain is evolving very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Europe is, in our mind, the second wave to come. Mm -hmm. uh, all OEMs are, are putting electric vehicles on mm -hmm. the road. One of the unique aspects of our project is that the way we've scoped it out in our PEA is to become a very clean provider of lithium chemicals. Mm -hmm. So low water use, low CO2, it's clean energy, mm -hmm. access to hydropower if we need it. Mm, nice. And so we think that fits nicely, really nicely like, to the European like supply chain. Sounds then. But you have <laughs> well, uh, hydropower and yes. you generate your own power in addition. Yeah, yes. amazing. <laughs> well, that is fantastic. Yeah. What, what would be the time frame for the whole project and, until we would see like production? Sure, so we're looking like at a, years, around a, a late 2025 type time mm -hmm. frame for production, mm -hmm. just under two years of construction. Mm -hmm. Then we need to go through the pre-feasibility and the feasibility. And mm -hmm. in 2020, we'll focus on optimizing the process route. Mm -hmm. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to incorporate the byproducts. Mm -hmm. And we also see there's some areas where we can perhaps finesse the OPEX and CAPEX mm -hmm. uh, as we move towards the pre-feasibility. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, great. So. Let's come back uh, to uh, reality today. What yes. is cash in the company? Who are your largest shareholders? What has management? Give me the game. Yeah, we, uh, management has uh, eight to ten percent ownership oh, nice. in the game, okay. including board and, yeah. and everything. Uh, largest shareholders, uh, backed by a couple of uh, brokers with uh, Haywood Securities, about thirty-five percent. Mm -hmm. uh, mining veterans there for the long term to support us through this. Mm -hmm. We have about fifteen to twenty percent institutional between Canada and Europe, and about ten percent high net worth individual out of California. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so good mixture. It's a good mixture. Yeah. I can sp I speak to 65 or 70 percent of our shareholder base every week. Okay. Super. Yes. That's fantastic. Okay. So what is cash in the bank? Because I assume you have a heavy work program for this year. Well, we'd like to focus on, so we have about half a million dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, this year's work program is going to be less focused on drilling mm -hmm. uh, because to infill drill to take it to pre-feasibility study that's capital intensive, mm -hmm. we're going to focus the efforts on the processing side mm -hmm. and get to the place where we get to small pilot scale leading into 2021 mm -hmm. and then ultimately pilot scale. So this year will be about the optimization. How do we make that lithium in the ground more valuable? Mm -hmm. And let's understand the byproducts because those are potentially the sources of the capital, CapEx financing mm -hmm. down the road. Yeah. SOP, very attractive dynamics in yeah. the market, cesium, very strategic. Mm -hmm. So 2020 will be about making that lithium and the byproducts incrementally better. Fantastic, great. Well, Alex, then I would say keep it going. All the best for that. Okay. And I would say the, the world is waiting for your lithium okay. because the demand is really going through the roof, right? Very good. <laughs> Super. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Alex Holmes, the CEO of Plateau Energy Metals. And you heard it's uh, sixth largest uh, lithium uh, resource here on the, in the world. And uh, by 2025, they want to be in production, $600 million capex. That's absolutely manageable. Great shareholder basis, uh, management 8 to 10 percent. That's also fantastic. And and uh, yeah, lithium is uh, one of the things we really want to be because uh, e-mobility is unstoppable. And so I suggest check out the company. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Toronto.